Today we're talking about a G.I. Joe sniper. Guy so good at hiding he's only ever showed up in a few issues of the comic book series, yet has been on many missions. Today is all about Crosshair. Who is he? Let's talk about him. Don Farty, the man who would later become Crosshair, was born in Brockton, Massachusetts. His name comes from the Director of Developmental Services, a guy of the same name who served in Pawtucket from 1984 to 2013, specializing in prototype model development and whose sample programs touched G.I. Joe, Transformers, Star Wars, Nerf, and others. Incidentally, the codename that Don would get, Crosshair, is a name also used in both Transformers and later Star Wars. Character Don Farty enlisted in the United States Army, earning an 11 Bravo MOS with a secondary in marksmanship after graduating sniper school at Fort Benning as an E-4. One of the qualifiers for marksmanship was 2020 correctable vision. His file card says the sharpness of his vision is off the scale. When he was asked to read the last line at his Army entrance exam eye test, he responded with the copyright notice on the bottom of the chart. With that came phenomenal accuracy, which means less ammunition used, less collateral damage, and, as another file card notes, more efficiency than a drone. During sniper school, Farty learned all about marksmanship, sniper, and spotter equipment, and how to calculate with mills, including factoring in things like target movement, humidity, temperature, and wind readings. He also learned breathing discipline, trigger control, and recoil management, and even things like how to talk and dialogue with an observer or spotter during fieldcraft and marksmanship phases, during the fieldcraft element of sniper school, Don learned E&E &E tactics, how to stalk, camo, cover and concealment, target detection, how to collect battlefield intelligence, how to make a ghillie suit, how to build hides and shelters, as well as danger space techniques. Based on his file card data, when Crosshair goes out in the field after a target, he becomes the field. He can blend in so effectively that an enemy five feet away won't see him. He tends to study his targets hard and thoroughly enough that he can make accurate predictions about future movement and speed. The downside is that he doesn't leave this on the range. Crosshair takes this behavior to the barracks and has had this bad habit of sneaking up on other people and startling them. It becomes rude when they suddenly see Don looking over their shoulder and violating their privacy and personal space. Crosshair has some history with a Cobra expert marksman as well who goes by Cobra Claws Commander. Claws being an acronym for Combat Light Armor Weapons Specialist. The Cobra Claws commander worked in special operations for a European agency before getting into mercenary work and smuggling bootleg video games and hip-hop CDs. It was during this time when Crosshair had the Cobra Specialist in his sights. Crosshair squeezed the trigger and sent a round downrange, but unfortunately, the Cobra operative's body armor protected him, which means he was wearing at least level 3 ballistic protection, and Crosshair was likely using an M24 or M40. Should have used a bear with a headshot. That Cobra Specialist would have been a puff of red mist then. It was apparently a super long shot. So long, he would have had to calculate the Coriolis effect into his equation, certainly noting this exchange in his dope book. Eventually, Crosshair transferred from the U.S. Army to the G.I. Joe team when he became one of the marksmanship instructors when not out on a mission. Crosshair first appeared in comic books the same year his action figure debuted, 2003. This was in Brandon Jerwa's G.I. Joe Frontline issue 13 by Image and Devil's Due Publishing. The team was on an ongoing operation to take down Wingfield in their terrorist cell. Vance Wingfield, who's been a villain of the G.I. Joe team since the early days of a real American hero, had now his son in charge, with help from his lieutenant, Dikembe. The Joes had been working with the Central Intelligence Agency to not only take down Wingfield, but to stop them from detonating dirty bombs in America. A Joe strike team was in Seattle, Washington, to capture Dikembe from their Waldorf compound. This Joe team was Flint, Dialtone, Law & Order, Scarlet, Jinx, Shockwave, and Crosshair. Flint and Shockwave were the breachers with Dial Tone and Law and Order close by as security. Jinx and Scarlet were on motorcycles ready to seal off the driveway, and Crosshair was on Overwatch, ready to snipe from the trees on the perimeter of the property on the left flank of the front entrance. The Kembe tried to escape in a van, so Crosshair pumped a few rounds through the windshield, though those failed to stop the van. Crosshair paired up with Shockwave for the pursuit, but it was Jinx and Scarlet who managed to stop the Kembe and allowed them to take the unconscious villain into custody. Chuckles was one of the deep cover agents that had helped expose Wingfield's operation, and a fake hit on him, which was meant to hide his cover, didn't work. So Wingfield ended up capturing Chuckles and held Chuckles aboard a plane on the tarmac of Charles de Gaulle Airport in France. Wingfield demanded an exchange. Chuckles for millions of dollars and for his mother Sherry to be delivered to them. Crosshair was on the team that brought Sherry to the airport. When Tyler stepped out of the plane, gun in hand, to receive his mother, Crosshair shot the weapon out of Wingfield's hand by sending a round through his palm. Crosshair said he was not happy he had to pull the shot, meaning no one shot, one kill here. But if Tyler was killed, the guards would have killed the mother, to be fair. 
During the battle on Cobra Island against Serpentor and its cult called The Coil, Hawk had Crosshair, Lowlight, and Dinah, formerly of the October Guard, set up in the jungle. Later, Destro had been captured and needed to be transported to the United Nations in Washington, D.C. to stand trial for his crimes and his attempts to incite war in South America. Crosshair was on the team that would transport Destro from Kansas to the District of Columbia, but instead of watching for threats, CoverGirl had Crosshair keep his crosshairs right on Destro's chrome dome. Here he looks to be using a Mark 12 SPR or a DMR version of an M4. The M2010s weren't in use at the time that this book was published, which was 2004. His next appearance came in America's Elite issue 25 in the massive group shot that graced the cover of the book. For the shot, Crosshair was number 135, right next to Depth Charge and Leatherneck, pretty much right in the middle of the entire roster. Then, during the World War III event, Crosshair was on a team in the U.S. CENTICOM AO, the country of Uzbekistan, along with Outback, Recoil, Grunt, Crossfire, and Backblast. As I mentioned a moment ago, Crosshair's first action figure was released in 2003, which came in a two-pack alongside Cobra Claws Commander for the Spy Troops line. This crosshair came equipped with a silver M16 M203 setup, along with his booty hat, tack vest, and ghillie suit, and a sniper rifle that looks like a AICW AW, the same company that makes SOCOM's Mark 13 and Mark 13 Mod 5s, and USMC's Mark 13 Mod 7 that replaced the M40 a few years ago. He also got a single figure in the 12-inch scale around this time. A solo version in the standard size released in 2004, the same year where Crosshair was in another two-pack, this time carded with Nunchuck for the Spy Troops Night Force subteam. The Valor vs. Venom line in 2004 found Crosshair in a Tiger Force two-pack along with Alpine. In 2017, the last Crosshair was released, this time for the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. Here he had his AI AX-50 rifle, scope, bipod, suppressor, and the case for it all, along with a neckerchief hat and a 44 Magnum revolver for his holster. To sum up Crosshair, we take a quote from one of his foul cards which says, when I'm in full undercover mode, you can forget about the needle in the haystack. I become just another piece of the straw in the haystack. And with that, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.